Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I make lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In this video, we will discuss about various effects of partial balancing in locomotives. Before we proceed, let us do the quick recap about various prerequisite concepts that are required to understand this topic. We know the classification table of balancing of masses problems. So we are going to discuss about balancing of two cylinder locomotive engine, which is coming under balancing of reciprocating masses. In our earlier video, we have discussed about balancing of single cylinder reciprocating engines. We have learned that complete balancing of single cylinder reciprocating engine is not possible. Even after the addition of balancing mass, still there will be some unbalanced forces left along the line of stroke as well as perpendicular to the line of stroke. By using this equation, FHU equal to 1 minus C into mass of reciprocating parts multiplied by omega square r cos theta, we can determine magnitude of unbalanced force along the line of stroke. Similarly, by using the formula C into mass of the reciprocating parts multiplied by omega square r sin theta, we can determine the unbalanced force along the perpendicular to the line of stroke. In the previous video, we have presented about introduction to locomotives, where we have presented 3D isometric view of the two-cylinder locomotive. We have two identical cylinders, cylinder one and two, and we will have two cranks. Very interestingly, these two cranks will have angle of 90 degree with each other. We have rotating unbalanced force in wheel one, then rotating unbalance in wheel two, then unbalanced due to reciprocating parts as well as revolving parts in crank one and in crank two. We have unbalanced acting in all four planes. This is the top view. So you can see here uh, the crank is having 90 degree with each other so that to have easy starting of the engine. After the due process, the obtained balancing mass is usually added on the rim of the driving wheels. Now let us come back to the topic. So we are considering two cylinder locomotive engine. So there will be unbalanced forces acting along line of stroke as well as along perpendicular to line of stroke. Because of this unbalancing, we call them as partial balancing. Due to this partial balancing of locomotives, it will create some undesirable effects. We are going to discuss the effects of partial balancing of locomotives. Let us introduce the notations that are going to be used in this study. We have two identical cranks, connecting rods, piston rods, pistons, and cylinders. Let R be the crank radius. L be the length of the connecting rod. Theta crank angle with line of stroke. Omega is angular velocity of the crank. We use M or E to indicate that mass of the reciprocating parts per cylinder. Similarly, M R O to denote mass of the rotating parts per cylinder. Small letter C is the fraction of the reciprocating parts to be balanced. A is the distance between the center lines of the two cylinders. Then capital letter L is the distance between the two driving wheels. Capital letter R, radius of the driving wheel. Capital B, our record answer, which is nothing but the 
balancing mass that is to be found. Small letter b is to denote the radius of rotation at which balancing mass to be placed. Now let us determine the effect of partial balancing of locomotives. Due to the unbalanced force along the line of stroke, we have two effects, namely variation of tractive force and swaying couple. Similarly, we will be having unbalanced force perpendicular to the line of stroke that will create the effect known as hammer blow. We are going to study about these three effects one by one now. First one, variation of tractive force. It says that the resultant unbalanced force due to the two cylinders along the line of stroke is known as tractive force. So this is cylinder one, this is cylinder two. This is the unbalanced force along line of stroke due to cylinder one. This is the unbalanced force along line of stroke in cylinder two. So the resultant unbalanced one, summing of these two, we will get the record answer known as variation of tractive force. We know that unbalanced force along line of stroke for cylinder one what is it formula? The formula is 1 minus E mass of the reciprocating parts multiplied by omega square r cos theta. Now unbalanced force along line of stroke for cylinder 2, we will have the same formula. Can you tell me what will be the crank angle of cylinder 2? That is 90 plus theta. 90 plus theta. Tractive force is a resultant of these two unbalanced forces. So by summing them up, Summing them, I got the equation for tractive force. So next step is to find maximum and minimum value of tractive force. So that value will be maximum when d by d theta of cos theta minus sin theta is equal to 0. So differentiating it. We know that so I could find positive values of theta so we got two theta values when theta is equal to 135 degree let us find the tractive force value. So on simplification, I can get the value as Now let us see, when theta equal to 315 degree, what will be the value of tractive force? After simplification, So 
so we got identical values the minus sign indicates the direction so we can call the as a minimum value positive as a maximum value so maximum variation interactive force is given by minus or plus root 2 1 minus c mass of the reciprocating parts multiplied by omega square r so using this expression we can determine the maximum variation in tractive force so now let us move on to the second effect namely swaying couple the two unbalanced forces acting at a distance between the line of stroke of the cylinders constitute a couple in the horizontal direction this couple is known as swaying couple so this force will try to create couple towards this this force will try to create couple in the opposite direction so the effect of the swaying couple is to sway the engine alternatively in clockwise and counterclockwise direction about a vertical axis let us derive swaying couple so we know that swaying couple let me denote by c suffix s is nothing but moments of forces about the engine center line let this be f h1 this force multiplied by what is the distance between a line of action of the force and the center plane the distance is a by 2 the next one is unbalanced force along the line of stroke due to the 2 multiplied by what is this distance minus a by 2 so let me substitute the equation of fh1 and fh2 you will get the tracked equation So on simplification, this is the equation by using which we can find the value of swaying couple. So as an engineer, it's very important for us to know at what crank angle this value will be maximum and minimum. So to find the maximum and the minimum values, we know that we need to differentiate cos theta minus sin theta with respect to theta and equate it to zero. So we will have two theta values as 45 degree or 225 degree. When we substitute theta equal to 45 degree in swaying couple equation. On simplification, same way, let us find the CS expression when theta is equal to 225 degrees. So from these two equations C and D, we can understand that we will get the same magnitude. Probably when theta equal to 225 degree, we get the minus sign. The minus sign indicates the opposite direction in which the maximum value occurs. This is the equation using which 
we can find the claquette maximum swaying couple value. Now let us come to the third and final effect, namely hammer blow. We have already studied the unbalanced force along perpendicular to line of stroke is given by the formula balancing mass multiplied by omega square into radius of rotation of the balancing mass into sin theta. As you could see from this equation, at some angles, the value of this will be maximum. When theta is equal to 90 degree or 270 degree, he will be having the maximum value. This maximum unbalanced force acting perpendicular to the line of stroke is known as hammer blow. The unbalanced force along the perpendicular to the line of stroke produces variation in pressure on the rails which results in hammering action on the rails. The maximum magnitude of this vertical unbalanced force is known as hammer blow. The effect of the hammer blow is to cause the variation in pressure between the wheel and the rail. So this cow shows the variation in pressure between the wheel and the rail for one revolution of the wheel. So we know that unbalanced force in the vertical direction can be determined by this equation. When theta equal to 90 degree, the value as B omega square B. And when theta is equal to 270 degree, so I will get this value as minus B omega square into B. Formula for hammer blow is plus or minus B omega square B. This is the important equation for us. Let capital letter P be the downward pressure on the rail due to static load W. W is the static weight of that train per wheel. Whole weight is divided equally to all the wheels. Let us assume that per wheel that static load is W. At one crank angle, Static load will be acting downwards, whereas hammer blow will be acting upward. If P minus B omega square B is positive value, if net pressure is positive, that means pressure will be acting downwards. That means your vehicle will be stable. That means wheels will not be lifted off from the rails. In case, if B minus B omega square B is negative, that means net pressure will be acting upward. It is not safe. In that case, wheels will be lifted from the rails. In order to avoid the wheel to be lifted off from the rail, we need to find the maximum speed of the locomotive. How can we find? So this is the condition for us. Using which I can write P is equal to B omega square B. From this I can write omega is equal to square root of P by B into P. So if the speed exceeds this limiting speed, then wheel will be lifted from that rail. So we should operate our train below this limiting speed. That is the concept. So this is the effect of the hammer blow. Finally, let us summarize the key takeaways from this lecture. Three effects of partial balancing in locomotives are variation tractive effort, swaying couple and hammer blow. If you are asked to determine the hammer blow, or limiting speed of the locomotive, we must know the value of the balancing mass to be added, capital letter B. How to determine the balancing mass in a two-cylinder locomotive? We will 
discuss it in our next class by using a numerical problem. Hope this video is useful to you. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.